Hi, I'm Tom Glassman, and I've been photographing for well over 40 years. And I'm here with a few quick tips on how you can immediately start taking better photographs, whether you're an old pro or you're trying to master a new DSLR for the first time, or even if you only shoot with a cell phone. And the way we're going to do this is to look at two or three different photographs and discuss why they work, why they don't, composition, and more. My goal is to get you in and out quickly so you can spend more time shooting and less time watching me. So let's get started. Welcome back to another episode of How to See. And what I wanna share with you today are some images uh, and tips and techniques that, that I use to get photographs. This first image is of trees that have leaves in bloom in the background and that really aren't in the foreground. Uh, what I was driving by a tree farm and I saw this sort of vertical lines going up and down and they changed visibility when they were backlit and when they were down here. It just looked like an interesting pattern of vertical stripes, uh, what have you. And uh, so I stopped and oddly enough, it this is one of the images that took longer to take the shot than almost anything else I've ever taken. And the reason was um, I had to drive around even before I got to the shot and find a place where the trees in the background were sort of on a hill. So they, you would see leaves in the background where in the foreground, since it's a tree farm, all the branches were cut off because either raising these trees or hybrid poplars for a, uh, I guess to make paper. Um, and because the branches are trimmed here, uh, they're sort of bright orange because they're wet. And when I was taking this shot, they had trucks driving around watering, um, you know, the different rows of trees and the trucks would kick up all this dust. And then you had to wait for the dust to settle. Also, I had to wait, the sun was going in and out of the clouds. If when the sun was out, you got this nice bright green contrast. When it went in from the clouds, that disappeared. Also, this was uh, in Oregon, near Boardman, Oregon, right near the, or right on the Columbia River Gorge. So the wind is blowing like 40 knots. So every one of those trees is just swaying back and forth like crazy. And I'm actually um, holding my parker in front of the camera and the tripod to keep the wind from blowing it over and keep it from shaking. Um, in this particular case, I sort of focused about a third of the way down. Uh, I stopped down because I wanted to, uh, you know, get a lot of depth of field. The problem was because the wind was blowing everything, it was just going to be blurry. Uh, I wasn't going to get anything tap, tack sharp. I figured let's just go for a nice abstract. And that's what I ended up doing here. So again, uh, what I'm looking for is like lines, colors, patterns, shapes, whatever. And that's in this particular case. Uh, the next image I want to show you, uh, this is film image. And uh, this is taken with a 300 millimeter telephoto lens. And because a telephoto lens has a very short, narrow depth of field, um, I what I was looking for was this overall pattern. This is what and I'd been looking for this sort of thing for years. I just wanted a solid, constant wall to wall, uh, you know, image of just branches and twigs and just something that would make, um, you know, almost like a wallpaper pattern. In this case, um, if you shoot it with a telephoto lens, let's say you go to F8, which I was probably at, uh, the very, I guess foreground trees would be very sharp and everything else would be out of focus and you would lose that pattern. So I did a multiple exposure in the camera. Um, basically, I did three exposures, each time focusing a little bit further in. And what you got is this, and I guess this would be like focus stacking today, uh, but I was doing it in the camera in the film era. And uh, you just tried to get a, uh, an, an overall pattern. You know, if uh, again, you go by and looking at trees, 
And it's not a great image in and of itself, but if you can see in your head what you want, if you're looking for things like patterns all the time, then this would suggest itself to you. Oddly enough, this kind of greenish color here, uh, this was in April near Astoria, Oregon. Um, and the trees were probably going to sprout five minutes after I left. So they really were that green. But again, what I'm looking for here and what I captured is just a pattern. Uh, something, you know, you keep an eye out for in nature. Uh, this is back to that tree farm I was at earlier. And I've been there over a bunch of years. I used to teach some photo workshops out in Eastern Oregon. And on the way, I'd pass by this place. And I'd always stop. And in this case, uh, you're just looking down between the uh, trees. Something, you know, I sort of mentioned here is that I sort of made sure that you didn't see the wind turbine in the background or a truck or something that would detract from the idyllic nature. Also, this was shot with a 300 millimeter lens. It was shot in the fog. And when you shoot a um, telephoto lens in the fog, it compresses all the moisture in the air. And that's what gives it this very soft watercolor, you know, uh, effect. Um, again, in this case, I was just looking for a leading lines, vertical up and down. Uh, and I wasn't holding my breath too much. Uh, it was sort of an okay image, okay composition. What makes it is the very soft quality uh, of the moisture in the air. And I wasn't, I hadn't counted on that as much when I took the shot. So that's what's going on there. Again, looking for patterns, leading lines, verticals. And I'm just going to share a couple quick more that I won't go into, but from the same place over different years. And you can actually see the blue sky here. But again, there was no great shot suggesting itself. So I just used, again, a telephoto lens to compress everything. Here, you can tell this is close because it's out of focus. And it's just a single shot, uh, no multiple exposure. But it just became a nice sort of moderate high key image. Another one. Um, this image actually, again, shot many years before at the same place. You can see a little bit of green here. It's a color photograph, but it's a nice overcast March day in Oregon with, you know, so it's open shade. There are no harsh shadows. Uh, you've got a little bit of color, but it looks almost like a black and white. This particular shot, by the way, was picked up by an interior designer in New York and it was printed 80 inches wide and used in an office building. So that's going to go in my obituary. And here again, same place, uh, different year, bright hot sun hitting the trees. And this is what's called a high key image. You just open up about a stop. But this is what a lot of uh, fashion designers, that is called high key images, they'll shoot their models and it looks very bright and washed out and pale. But um, that's what this is. And what I'm saying is, um, if you don't have a great shot calling out to you, look at what's in front of you and see what you can do to move in, to make it, to isolate it, to open the lens a little bit. Um, you've seen three very interesting kind of images, but uh, the images themselves aren't that great. It's, it's how they're, you know, shot and composed. So again, keep an eye out for that. Remember, anything is fair game for an image. And thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care. My young computer savvy assistant reminds me that it's really important to ask for likes and subscribes. But I would also love some comments below discussing what we're diving into and what you might want to see in the future. With all that out of the way, thanks for watching and thanks for your patience. See you next episode.